Amen. Hallelujah. It's wonderful to be back in the Lord's house after that great choir singing tonight in our midweek prayer service. We're so glad that you're here tonight and just still praising God over the wonderful services that we had this past Sunday. And man, I tell you what, I'm just thankful for what we've been able to what we've been able made been able to feel. And uh, like I said, I told Brother Ronnie, I said it's just good to get back in this house. It's good to get back in his house, amen, good to get back with God's people, and like I said, let's just pray tonight that the Lord will just move with us and help us again tonight, and, and like I said, we'll just do whatever the Lord wants us to do, amen, and we, we, we don't want to get in the way, we just want the Lord to move in our hearts, and we certainly need to pray for our country, amen, we need to pray for our nation as a whole, and uh, folks, the Lord's coming back, he's coming back. And I tell you what, we need to be uh, uh, we need to be praying, we need to be working. Uh, you know, the Lord's uh, burdened my heart with a message for this coming Sunday night. Amen. Uh, I want as like many people as they can to invite lost people to come Sunday night. Uh, it's been just on my heart the last several days, and I've been studying and thinking about it, Brother Ronnie. And if, if the Lord lets me on Sunday night, I'm gonna be preaching about uh, the screams of hell. On uh, Lord's give us some things and give us some things in scriptures and we've uh, we've we've found some things and and I, I believe it could be a help and I believe we could see folks saved on Sunday night if if you just get some here so just pray for them and pray for us that God will just continue to help us Amen but we're here tonight looking for God to do something in this service this evening 
Amen. And we certainly need to hear from heaven, don't we? Amen. And so uh, let's just remember to pray for all our sick and all our shut-in, that God will just uh, be with all them tonight. I think uh, Brother Rodney, Ronnie was telling me that Larry Dorn's sister passed away this week. And then, uh, so just pray for that family tonight. I think they, Brother Larry and Miss Dean was there and they had the funeral tonight. So you just pray for that family. Amen. And they had just been, come back from Virginia on the borderline there from a funeral on Saturday, Sunday. So uh, just a lot have happened in that, that side of the family. So pray for them. Pray for all our sick, our shut in. Amen. The Lord will just uh, continue to touch them. Amen. Pray for Gail. Keep her in your prayers. Uh, I was talking to Rodney on Monday. And, uh, you know, like I said, it, we was able to see Gail here in church on Sunday morning. And like I said, she's just, uh, she's still got a long way to go. But the Lord's going to help her. Amen. And we're, we're trusting in that and what God's working a great miracle. Uh, continue to pray for Joyce. That God will continue to help her. Um, uh, pray for Shaden today. She had surgery. That's Barbara's granddaughter. She had surgery this morning, and I think she's doing okay. Uh, she, she's doing all right. And so uh, just, just pray for her that God will just give her a speedy recovery. And uh, just uh, like I said, just pray for all our sick. Pray for Brother Robert. Keep him in your prayer. It was good to see him back Sunday. Brother Bert, keep him in your prayers as well. Uh, Joanne, uh, Alice, Mabry, uh, Miss Susie, all our shut-ins. Pray that God will just ever be with them. Uh, but let's pray uh, for the lost, most importantly. My, my mind's been there uh, last several days, and it's where I should always be, uh, praying for the lost. And, and folks need to be saved. And there's folks that need to be saved right here in this very church. And I know there's been several. Uh, I talked about it in the prayer room to the men, uh, several that need, that, that, that I feel like the Lord's been dealing with here lately. And... Uh, and, and, and God's doing something, amen, on his end. And, uh, and we just need to let him do it. If we let him do it, God will save them, amen. We can't save them, but the Lord can, amen. So just pray pray, pray much for that, amen. So uh, do we have any other prayer requests tonight before we pray? Your mom, amen. Let's pray for Miss Sandy, amen. Thank you, Brother Brian. Let's remember that. Somebody else? Mm. Oh my, amen, let's pray for that. Brother Larry, do you have something? Mm. Amen. Amen, let's remember that. Somebody else? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Amen, what was his name? All right, let's remember that. Amen. Somebody else? Amen. Yeah. I'm, they're having a hard time with that. Amen. So uh, just pray for them. Amen. I, I know when you when you had one under the nest so far long, amen, and they uh, fly the coop, per se. Amen. Move on in life. Amen. That, that's a hard thing. Amen. So do pray for them. Amen. Somebody else? Amen. 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 It was good to see her that this past Sunday morning too. Amen. Somebody else? Anybody else tonight? Amen. 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 Let's let's do pray for that. Amen. Somebody else? Yeah, Amen. Let's, let's pray for them, and Amen, and uh, and do pray. I caught to Steve the other night, and uh, he is still hurting pretty bad in between moans and groans. Amen. Uh, I was able to get a little bit of a conversation in. Amen. But when you have almost all your teeth taken out of your head, and uh, so and uh, so, uh, he, so just pray for him. Somebody else? Anybody else? Amen. Continue to pray for our young people at schools. 
in our school. Let's keep praying for them. And God will just always keep a guiding hand on them. Amen. God, God will be with them. Amen. Somebody else real quickly. Amen. 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 Let's we'll partner with you in that, brother. Somebody else. Amen. Just remember that. Amen. Lacey sends me messages just ever constantly. Amen. Continue to pray for her family. Amen. Just keep keep them in your prayers. They need the Lord. Amen. Somebody else. Amen. 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 Let's pray for him tonight. Amen. Pray for Brad and Angela. They'll get in church. Amen. Got them kids. Amen. Somebody else? Amen. Let's remember that. Somebody else. Somebody else. Amen. Anybody with unspoken request, do this by the raise your hand. Everybody's will enable us to join an altar and let's pray. Give our admonition. Amen. I think Miss Lindsay wanted to sing tonight, so we're going to let her come sing. Amen. You pray for her now. We're going to get Dave and Stacy to come sing. Get yellow for her. They don't have that so you listen to someone and they know what you're saying. Jesus loves me, yes I know. For the Bible tells me so, little ones to hear below, they are weak but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me, the Bible tells me so. Amen. I'm going to ask Brother Dave and Miss Stacy to come sing for us tonight. You pray for them. Jesse, you got a song tonight?
before I put it after they get after they get done. The white one, Matthew. can only imagine what it'll be like when I walk by your side. I can only imagine what my eyes will see when your face is before me. I can only imagine I can only imagine Surrounded by your glory What will my heart feel? Will I dance for you, Jesus? Oh, when all of you be still Will I stand in your presence? To my knees will I fall Will I sing hallelujah? Will I be able to speak at all? I can only imagine. I can only imagine. I can only imagine when that day comes and I find myself standing in the sun. I can only imagine. When all I'll do is forever, forever worship you. I can only imagine it. I can only imagine. Surrounded by your glory, what will my heart feel? Will I dance for you, Jesus? Oh, and all of you be still Will I stand in your presence? Or to my knees will I fall? Will I sing hallelujah? Or I'll be able to speak at all I can only imagine I can only imagine Surrounded by your glory what will my heart feel? Will I dance for you, Jesus? Oh, will all of you be still? Will I stand in your presence? Or to my knees will I fall? Will I sing hallelujah? Will I be able to speak at all? I can only imagine. I can only imagine.
So many years, so many lambs were offered up, but all the blood that was shed could never feel that bitter cup. Till one spotless lamb in the form of man gave his life on Calvary. His was the only blood that could ever set me free. His blood was not just blood of another spotless lamb. His blood was precious blood, for it washed the sin of man. And His blood fills my body. And it sets my spirit free. I'm so glad his precious blood still flows from Calvary. And no other blood could heal my broken body. And no other blood could save my sin sick soul. And no other blood could conquer death or win the victory. Oh, no other blood but the blood Jesus shed for me. His blood was not just blood of another spotless lamb. His blood was precious blood. For it washed the sin of man, and his blood fills my body, and it sets my spirit free. I'm so glad his precious blood still flows from Calvary. Oh, I'm so glad his precious blood still flows from Calvary. I ain't I heard that one, amen. I like that was a beautiful song, amen. Hallelujah. About you can't sing enough, you can't say enough about the blood. Amen. That's the only reason we're here tonight, it's cause of blood. Amen. The blood of Calvary, amen. I'm I'm glad that I'm saved, aren't you? Amen. I, I there's just sometimes, you know, you just can't wait to get back to church, amen. And I love church, don't you? Amen. If it was up to me, I'd go to church every day. Amen. But I know that's impossible. Amen. And I, I, I wish we could, but it's just, I know it's uh, something that just we can't do. Amen. But uh, but uh, I, I love going to church and I love going to, with God's people. Amen. What I'd like for some of these men to do, amen, I've got some charts I want you to be able to keep now as we go through probably the next year. Okay. Uh, hold on to these. All right. Now, one is going to be. What, what we have here is what I'm going to show you. When you put it together, it's going to make one big chart. Okay, I couldn't put it all on one page. So I had to blow it, we had to blow it up into two pages so that you could be able to read the writing. And so what I want you to do is as we go through these next chapters, through chapter 6 through chapter 19, and if it takes us as long to get to Revelations chapter 6, it took us three years. Uh, I don't know how long it will take us to get through, but... But this is something that you can look at and have a guide. Now, I'll tell you what it is. And boy, I guess if you just want to, you take and give, and you give the second sheet right behind them. Amen. And because uh, what that is, so if you just stay, uh, try to, and I know where you'll look, what you'll see is you'll see the fold in the paper the way we've, uh, uh, Miss Susan copied it. And so what you'll have to do is you can, you can tell where the fold is in the book, on the paper. And uh, you maybe can maybe put that together on your own. And so it won't overlap. But I think these are some things that I think will be a help to you. And uh, go ahead and give uh, her two because Charles will want one. Brother, my, you got to, okay. And uh, these are things. And I, I'll keep some copies here. Uh, I know there's enough for everybody tonight. But what I'm going to give you tonight is a chart. And we're, we'll, be, we'll be referring back to this uh, for, for uh, several months as we go through this. And, and I know when you first look at it, it looks a little confusing. And, but what we'll do is we'll explain some of it. Amen. But the guy 
that wrote this book was named was he was a preacher. His name was Clarence Larkin, and he uh, he wrote this and had this copyrighted around the turn of the century, the nineteen uh, in the nineteen hundreds, and around nineteen eighteen this book was copyrighted. And uh, they, brother Ronnie, they were publishing books. You know, you you let me. I've got a book at the house. You're letting me borrow that was wrote in the eight, early 1800s. And, um, and I like to look at old books, and I, I like to, and this is an old book that I have here tonight. And they still sell this book in Bible bookstores. You can still get this book. It'll have a nice cover on it. But I have an older book. This book is probably back from the 1940s. This is how old this book is. And, uh, and what it is, is all it is, is talking about the coming of the Lord. And uh, it, it's great for you Bible students and uh, to learn things. And, and uh, what it is is just a chart. Clarence Larkin, it, way back then in the early 1900s, he put this together. And it's talking about basically what we've been talking about and got to the point of where we're at now. Uh, when everybody gets one, I'll kind of talk us through it. I'm just going to introduce something tonight, and then we're going to go on with it. But I'll, I'll make sure everybody has one before I get started. And uh, I and everybody will have one. Like I said, if you have to, uh, I can. If you need it blown up some more, we can do that. If you if it's not big enough for you, we'll see if we can blow it up for you more. But a lot of preachers has this in their study. This is one thing that a lot of preachers get when they start studying uh, God's word and start studying about the end times. And and Clarence Larkin, uh, this is the way we believe as a church, uh, brother Ronnie. This is what we as a church believe. And it goes uh, all the way, like I said, and I know it looks, a lot of it is uh, maybe look confusing to you tonight, but there's a lot of good things that you can look at, and I want you to keep that, keep that in your Bible, have it handy, especially on Wednesday nights. And it may come handy on your own Bible study. You might find some things, and you might look at the chart and put it together, and uh, you might want to put yours together, might want to cut it where you kind of see the seam, put it together, tape it together, then fold it. And, uh, but we'll let you do that on your own time. But what you'll see right here in this corner, if everybody can see my hand, you'll see the church right here. You see this where my finger is? All right, it's on the far right hand. Amen. Uh, and it's the church. And that's the age we're in now. This is where we're at now. We are in the church age. And what it is, Brother Ronnie, we're in, that, we're in the day of grace where sinners can be saved, sinners can be born again. And if you'll see that line going up and see this church, it says the glorified church with the Lord. What have we been preaching about the last four or five weeks? Amen. This is when the rapture takes place. The rapture takes place. You'll see here at the bottom, the grave. Y'all see the grave? Amen. That's where the resurrected saints come up out of the grave. And then we which are alive or remain shall be caught up together to meet the Lord in the air. And this is where we have been. Amen. Now this is where we are now. We're in the church age. But in our studies the last several weeks, this is where we've been. We've been talking about in that heavenly courtroom in Revelation chapter 4 and verse number 5. And can anybody tell me what we've been doing? What have we been doing? We've been praising the Lord. We're going to be praising the Lord over there. Amen. And as if you keep, the, keep your chart handy over the next uh, several months, amen, what we're going to get into next from this point on, after the rapture of the church, we are a pre-tribulation church. I'm a pre-tribulation pastor. Now, I'm, and, and I, uh, the church is a pre-tribulation church. And what we believe, Brother Ronnie, is that we are going to be raptured out before the tribulation. Now, from this point on till this point is seven years. I know that's a lot, and but there's a lot that's going to be going on in those seven years. There's things that's going to be going on in heaven. There's going to be things that going on, and we're going to deal with Daniel's 70th week. We're going to be talking about things, and, and like I said, as we go along in the chart, Brother Matthew, we'll be able to follow along I wish I could really have just blow this thing up. I really would have loved to just have blown it up and we could have just looked at it together. Maybe had some kind of projector and that way we could have just blown it up and looked at it. But I think this is going to be a handy tool unto you. And like I said, you're more than free to go and, and study it out for yourself and 
and, and, and just look. And I, th- I believe there's several places where Scripture is mentioned. And you can just follow along in the Word of God. You'll see Moses and Elijah down here in the middle of the tribulation. Amen. We talk, we'll be talking about those two witnesses. Amen. And a lot of people believe it'll be Moses and Elijah. Amen. And so there are a lot of things. Amen. This And Clarence Larkin just went by the Bible. How did he come up with this? All of this comes straight from a King James Bible. Amen. He just charted it out from a King James Bible. And a lot of preachers, and, 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 and you can't really find anything like this anywhere else. And uh, published by Clarence Larkin. But what I want you all to do tonight, amen, I want you to look in Revelations chapter number 6 with me. And like I said, we won't be uh, real long tonight because I want to do something uh, a little different tonight. Amen. Like I said, I, I'm looking forward to the Lord coming back, aren't you? Amen. amen. And here we have been... Amen. Here we've been these last several weeks, and my goodness, we've certainly enjoyed preaching out of Revelations chapter 4, and we've certainly enjoyed preaching out of Revelations chapter 5. And things that, that have not happened yet, things that are, are to come, Brother Ronnie, and uh, where Jesus takes the book out of his Father's hand, that title deed to the world, which is going to be these uh, seven seals that he's going to open up, and that's what we're going to go into, and you'll see that on your chart. You'll start seeing the seals start to be opened up. And we're going to just break these verses down. Now this, from this point on, a lot of preachers can preach to Revelation. Now I will not be able to do it justice. I don't care how many preachers or scholars have stood throughout the time. There's a lot of things I still won't understand. You know, just what the best the Lord has shown me, and maybe the, what the Lord has shown you. Uh, but we, we take this time now... And we look at it and we say, what does it mean to us? What does this mean to us since we're going to be in heaven? What, what does, why do we even need to know as a church why all this stuff's going on? I'll tell you why. Because of our loved ones and our dying loved ones that will die and go to hell. That's going to face this awful tribulation. There's going to be something much, as bad as the tribulation is going to be, Brother Ronnie. Hell is going to be much worse. Hell is going to be much worse. And so I'm not going to ask you to stand tonight, but I just want to read two verses in Revelation chapter number 6. Then I'm going to pray, and like I said, we won't be long tonight. I just want to do just a few things and just kind of get an introduction. And here we are. We, the fi- this amen has been given at the end of Revelation chapter 5. We have give praises to the Lord, and here he has got the book. And he begins to open them up. Let's just read the first two verses tonight. And I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard as it were the noise of thunder. And when you think of thunder, brother, it means there's a storm a coming. When you think of thunder, in the you know, it just doesn't happen suddenly. You hear the thunder, you hear it coming. And that is what you hear here. As it were the noise of thunder, one of the four beasts saying, Come and see. What we're seeing here, he said, he's talking to John. Come and see what is getting ready, Miss Felicia, to happen on the planet earth. Here we are. We're, we've talked about what we're going to be doing in heaven. But now they're saying, Come now, let us see. Let us see now what's going to happen upon the earth. And let's go on to verse number 2. And I saw, and behold, a white horse. Now there has been much controversy. There's been much debate on what this is all about. I'm going to tell you and give you a Bible scripture of who this is. And I saw, and behold, a white horse. And he, and I want you to get a hold of that, that that, you see that word he in there? It's not capitalized. That's not capitalized. That's a little h. And he that sat on him had a bow, and a crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. That's all we're going to read tonight. Let's pray for just a moment. Lord, I come before you thanking you, Lord, for giving us another opportunity to come into your house, Lord, and be able to dive into this word. Lord, as feeble as we are, Lord, with our words, and 
Lord, I pray to God that we'll be able to do it some justice tonight. Lord, of some of the things over the last several years you've given us as we've tried to study this. And dear God, I pray, Lord, our mind and our thoughts will be clear. Lord, our speech will be clear, easy to be understood. Lord, our hearts be receptive to the Lord and be a great warning to us, we as Christians, Lord, what is going to take place after you rapture us out. And Lord, I pray, dear God, it will give us a greater burning desire in our hearts to be able to see more of our loved ones come to know you as their Savior. And Lord, I pray, dear God, that you forgive us where we've let you down in that area. Lord, I pray, Lord, that we'll have compassion for sinners. Lord, we'll have compassion for the saints. And Lord, we'll just have the zeal, Lord, that you need us to have here in these last days. And all these things I ask, in your holy, precious name I pray, amen. Amen. I want to just bring just an introduction tonight. And we're not really, and we're just going to go just a little bit tonight because I don't want to overwhelm you with too much all at once because chapter 6 is just chock full of a lot of things that, that we really need just to take, take our time with. But what I'm going to title chapter 6, amen, we've titled all the chapters as we've went through the studies. We titled uh, chapter number 5 on sweet songs and heavenly paces. What we're going to title chapter 6 is simply this. Horsemen on the horizon. Horsemen on the horizon. Amen. And when you come to Revelation chapter number 6, it becomes a shock to the senses. For in the past two chapters, we've been allowed, Brother Ronnie, to witness the scenes of heavenly worship. Amen. We are a part, uh, Brother Larry, of this heavenly worship. And in this passage, we are going to see images of not heavenly worship, Brother Michael, but we're going to see images of divine wrath. Amen. Amen. Not just wrath, but divine wrath. Wrath from above. Amen. And uh, we have been in a place where, they, in Revelation chapter number 4, and we have been in a place in Revelation chapter 4 and verse number 5 where there's a lot of praise and where there's a lot of shouting going on. But we are about to examine a scene. We're about to examine some chapters filled uh, with pain and suffering. We are going on the opposite end. Amen. We have went from praise and shouting into chapter number 6 where you find pain and suffering. And in chapters number 4 and 5, we have been seated in heavenly places. Amen. We have been seated in heavenly places observing scenes of joy. And when we get to heaven, Brother Matthew, it will certainly be scenes of joy. Amen. We will have something to be happy about. Amen. And and in chapter 6, we are not in heavenly places, uh, but in chapter number 6, we are brought down to earthly places uh, uh, to not observe scenes of joy, but to observe scenes of judgment. Uh, I want you to get that. Uh, Chapter number 4, chapter number 5, we are sitting in heavenly places uh, observing scenes of joy. Chapter number 6, we are sitting in earthly places, observing earthly places, observing scenes of judgment. Amen. And beginning in chapter number 6, and that's why I give you that chart tonight. Beginning in chapter number 6, all the way through chapter number 19. What you find in chapter number 6 through chapter number 19 of your Bible in the book of Revelation, uh, Brother Jesse, is none other than the tribulation period. Amen. The tribulation period. The tribulation period is seven years. Amen. And our scale of thinking and our observing from the outside looking in, seven years doesn't seem to be that long. Amen. But And it really isn't that long in the scope of all things. But, but for this earth, that is going to be a long seven years. Amen. Now we all know that if you're Bible students tonight, amen, that you know that the tribulation is broken down into two parts. Amen. And those two parts will last uh, three and a half years. You have three and a half years of false peace that the Antichrist will give. And you will have three and a half years of what we call the great tribulation, the abomination of desolation. Preacher, is there anywhere that you can find the church in the tribulation? I cannot find it. Nowhere in the scripture that the church is in the tribulation. For we are in heaven. Amen. Because chapter number 
4 and chapter number 5 has us in those heavenly places. So there is no way, and I know there are a lot of preachers that will debate and says, well, I believe that we'll go through half of it. I believe we're in it now. But for there's no Bible proof, no biblical proof that we are in the tribulation. And we'll try to share those with you why we're not in the tribulation right now. You better pray to God we're not in it. Amen. And I tell you what, we'd all be messed up. Amen. We'd all be in bad shape if we were in the tribulation. Amen. But this period of time is clearly described in the Word of God. Amen. I'm going to do just a little bit of Bible reading tonight. I'm not going, we're not going to go too far, but I want you to follow with me in the Scriptures, if you will. I like where the Bible backs itself up, don't you? So I want you to turn with me to Jeremiah uh, chapter number 30 and verse number 7. Jeremiah chapter number 30, and if you want to make notes on those charts I give you, you're more than happy, free to do that. Those are yours to keep. Amen. You do with it what you will. Amen. Jeremiah chapter number 30 and verse number 7. This is what it's talking about here. This is the great prophet. Amen. Writing this. Alas, for that day is great, uh, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble. Jacob's trouble. Another word for tribulation. And why is it called Jacob's trouble? Because Israel... The elect, the chosen of the, the, his, amen, will be going through the tribulation because they still have not accepted the Messiah. Amen. They still don't believe that he's come yet. Amen. So they will have to go through the tribulation. Look, it is even the time of Jacob's trouble. But look at the end of the verse. But he, speaking of Israel, shall be saved out of it. Amen. Shall be saved out of it. Now follow with me in your Bibles to Daniel chapter number 12 and verse number 1. Daniel chapter number 12, verse number 1. Let's give this really quickly and we're going through this quick now. Daniel 12, 1. And at that time shall Michael stand up the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people and there shall be a time of trouble. You see that? Such as never was. What did Jeremiah 30 say? Amen. There ain't never been a day like it. Such as never was since there was a nation even to that same time. And at that time, thy people shall be delivered. That is a great promise to the children of Israel. They shall be delivered. Everyone that shall be found written in the book. Now, I want you to turn with me all the way over to Matthew chapter number 24. And I don't know about the rest of you, but when I began to write, read these scriptures up, Brother Ronnie, it just does something to me. It excites my very soul, especially when I'm going through a trial, when I'm going through a situation in my life. I can read these verses and I can hold my head up high and know that this ain't the end. Amen. That this is all the devil can ever do to me. Amen. You ought to bless the name of the Lord. This is all on this side the devil can ever do to you. Amen. But I like Matthew chapter number 24. Let's read some of this together. In verse number 3, are y'all there? Say amen. Amen. And he sat upon the Mount of Olives. And that's the same place he's coming back to on the second coming. And he sat upon the Mount of Olives. The disciples came unto him privately saying, Tell us when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? Amen. They're asking those questions today. They're asking when's the end of the world going to be? When is Armageddon? Amen. When are these things going to take place? And Jesus answered and said unto them... Take heed that no man deceive you. Oh my goodness, there have been so many, uh, Brother Jesse, people, scholars, preachers have stood up, amen, educators have stood up and tried to make dates and tried to set dates of when Jesus Christ was coming back and oh, they've all failed. But the Word of God says, no man knoweth the hour, no man knoweth the day that when he shall appear. Amen, but the Bible does say, but as it was in the days of Noah, as it was in the day of Lot, so shall it be in the 
coming of the Son of Man. Amen. Now let's go on. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear war of wars and rumors of wars. Amen. All these things that you see taking place in Syria and Egypt, you better have brought your ear up to attention to these things. Amen. Isaiah chapter number 17 is fulfilling itself right before our eyes. Now we're not waiting for nothing else except the rapture of the church, but these things that are lining up for this time of tribulation, these things are happening now. Amen. And now we see, amen, you shall hear of wars and rumors of war. See that you be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in divers places. Uh, oh, I've never seen a time uh, uh, when we've seen the natural disasters uh, that this earth has produced. Uh, amen. The storms are stronger than they say. Meteorologists say, amen. Weathermen of renown say that there has never been a time in history, amen, human history where the weather has been as as violent amen tornadoes or more violent than they've ever been hurricanes or more violent they're stronger and bigger than they've ever been amen think about those tsunamis now we have the world wide web we have national TV that we can see these disasters happening right in front of our very eyes uh, many of you may have remembered when the Japanese Japan had that earthquake a few years ago amen a lot of people were glued to their TV sets and said there was a great wave that was coming towards that, st uh, that country and, boy, and that, those islands. Huh? And you could see the water. Amen. They had helicopters and they had cameras as they began to watch this water began to just come on to that land. And, and we saw what happened, how terrible and how disastrous that was. Oh, there has never been a time uh, as this time uh, as we've seen of the such as earthquakes, uh, tornadoes, uh, uh, things that, that are different uh, that, than we've ever seen before. And uh, folks, I certainly believe that has no other time. I don't know when he's coming back, but I have just got a feeling in the air that it's going to be real soon. It's going to be real soon. Oh, bless the Lord for that. And all these are the beginning of sorrows. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you and you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Now he's talking to Israel here. He ain't talking to us. He's talking to Israel. And then shall many be offended and shall betray one another, shall hate one another. Many false prophets shall rise, shall deceive many. And look at verse number 12. Right here is where we're at. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Oh, Brother Ronnie, I could stop right there and I could preach for about two hours. Amen. And because iniquity shall abound and the love of many shall shall wax cold. I'm going to tell you, I, I asked the question and me and uh, this other pastor's been talking about where the love is, where the compassion is anymore with the people of God. Hey Amen. We're a very selfish people. Hey Amen. We're a very selfish generation. Hey Amen. And boy, I tell you, the love of many has certainly waxed cold. Hey Amen. We ought to come into this house of the Lord. Hey Amen. We should come into this sanctuary brother Ronnie each and every time we gather to worship can't wait to get together with the family once again amen leave all the other garbage outside the door amen let's just praise the Lord for just a little while somebody help me tonight amen let's get excited about what the Lord is doing and the Lord is doing a lot of wonderful things amen and we ought to thank God for it we ought to thank God as that song they sung tonight brother Jim about the blood amen that the blood is still amen accessible for sinners that they can be saved and I'm thankful that I can still go to that refuge I can still go to that source I can still have that help in that time of trouble that I'm in oh I've got a reason to praise him amen when all the storm clouds are raging round about me and the lightning is flashing all around and it seems like the ground is shaky underneath 
But bless God, I'm glad like the song that Matthew and some of them sings, uh, the anchor still holds. Uh, amen, I'm glad that I ain't going down, uh, but I'm a going up. Uh, amen, I'm a going up one of these days. Uh, amen, and I'm going to tell you, honey, uh, amen, there's a lot of people say, well, uh, you ought not let this in your church. Uh, you ought not let these in your church. Uh, amen, I'm going to be honest with you. I believe in taking a stand. Amen. Uh, amen, they're, they're, they're this crowd. Amen. Uh, hey, uh, they, uh, and you got to understand what I'm talking about right here. Uh, amen, there's this crowd. Amen, the homosexuals and sodomites. Uh, I don't know if y'all have heard about what's going down there in College Dale. Uh, amen, down there in College Dale. Uh, amen, they've got these, these homosexuals that have come into a church. Uh, amen, and they've come out. And uh, Amen, and all the churches did was take a stand. Uh, and now the church, now they're uh, writing this church off, talking about this church. Uh, amen, I believe in taking a stand. Amen. You just don't let open sin in the church uh, and say, well, there ain't nowhere in the scripture says that's all right. Amen, because I told somebody today. Amen. Somebody says, well, preacher, I don't believe in all that. I said, well, I said, God destroyed countries. God destroyed nations because of that awful sin. I told them this, though. I said, let me say this. I said, what we as a church are to do, amen, we're not to hate them, but we are to love them. Amen. We are to love them with compassion. We are to care for them. Amen. And just preach to them. And preach and preach and preach and preach and preach and preach because that's what will get it done. Each and every time you preach, amen. And because God loves them, God just don't love the sin. Amen. God loves the sinner. Amen. And he's going to love us. Amen. He's going to love those sinners as they go to hell because God so loved the world. Amen. He loved us while we were yet unlovable. He loved us while we were yet sinners. Amen. And then Christ died for us. Amen. I'm telling you, I'm thankful that I have a Savior tonight that loved me. Amen. I'm glad he came to where I was. Amen. And we're living in a day where the iniquity of this world has gotten so great. Amen. And I just can't understand it. I don't know if you've heard about it, but in one of the Midwestern states, I think it was, uh, there was this college baseball player. He was just going out for a jog just the other night. Amen. And there was three teenage boys. Uh, amen. And all, this is what they said. Uh, they got bored. Amen. Uh, three teenage boys and they said we got bored. This is it. This is the reason. Amen. I believe this thing's about to wrap up folks. He said we got bored. We didn't have nothing else to do. He said so well, let's get the next one. Amen. It runs by the house. Amen. We'll go after him. Amen. And this old boy just a college baseball player. Amen. Just running. Just jogging. Amen. Just doing his exercise. Run by those. We would just happen to be the next one. And them three teenage boys lit out after him, shot him in the back of the head and killed him dead. And this is what they said when they questioned him. Why did you do it? What did he do? He just he, he, They said he was just in the wrong place at the wrong time because we were bored and we thought it'd be fun to go kill somebody. Amen. We're living in wicked days. Amen. We're living in wicked times. You say, there was a place down there in Georgia, I can't remember. There was a man that went into one of the schools with an AK-47, amen, and began to just shooting up stuff. No, luckily nobody was killed, nobody was shot up, amen. And I'm telling you, we're living in wicked times. We're living with disturbed people. You say, preacher, what all's all this? Amen, I still believe in demonic possession. I believe that there are people that are demonic possessed, amen, the evils, the spirits, the supernatural things of this world. It says we fight spiritual wickedness in high places. Amen, you better believe in, you believe in angels, you better believe in the other force. Hey Amen. The demonic spirits are on the move. Amen. But bless God, I'm glad I can lift my head. Hey Amen. And know that I'm not going to have to be in this mess much longer. Hey Amen. Because I'm getting out of here. Hey Amen. I'm getting out of here. Somebody say hallelujah for that. Hey Amen. I'm going to read this verse and I want to play you a song. Hey Amen. I played a little bit it before church tonight and then I'm going to be done because I'm not going to go any further tonight. But I want you to look at 1 Thessalonians with me if you will. Hey Amen. I just want to read this. And boy, I needed this today, Brother Ronnie. I needed to hear it. Hey Amen. And I, I, I was kind of down and out, down in the mouth when I got in the car this afternoon. Hey Amen. And the next song that came over the, the player, hey Amen, was this song. This song I'm getting ready to play for you. Hey Amen. And I've listened to it three or four times since Brother Jesse. I played it for Brother Jesse just a little while ago. Hey Amen. And I tell you, 
you, I needed to hear this today. And I went to a while ago and I began to read this scripture. In 1 Thessalonians chapter number 4. Amen. I love this scripture. I've read it. It's probably one of the most tattered and torn pages in my Bible. The Bible says in 1 Thessalonians 4 and 13. But I would not have you to be ignorant brethren concerning them which are asleep. That ye sorrow not even as others which have no hope. I'm glad that we can come in here on Sunday morning and we can rejoice and get beside ourselves. Let the banks, just let it let it run the banks free. Hey man, let it just get out of banks a little while. People get beside themselves. People start rejoicing. You say, preacher, that ought to bother you sometimes. That people get excited like that. It don't bother me one bit. I wish more of us would get excited about what God's doing. I wish more people would stand and say, I want to be counted in one of those that wants to praise the Lord for what he's done for me in my life. What what he's brought me out of. What he's took me into like we preached on Sunday morning. We ought to stand up and say tonight, thank you Lord for your blessings on me. Thank you Lord for putting that name down in your precious book of life. Amen. I tell you, he don't have to go to that book of life. Amen. Because see our name written out. He already knows it's there. Amen. I'm going to tell you, I can't wait. I believe he's going to show it to us. Amen. He said this is the very day on October 24th, 1993, the day you got saved. I wrote, he ain't no angel writing a name down. I believe it is Jesus Christ himself that writes our name down in the book of life. You say, preacher, why do you got to get excited? Amen. Why do you have to say amen so much? Amen. Because my name's written. My name's written. My name's recorded in the Lamb's book of life. Hallelujah. So I will praise the Lord. Amen. If I have another opportunity to stand, I'll stand and say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Savior. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for what you've done for me. Thank you for your word that sustained me. Thank you, Lord, for holding me up when I could not stand. Thank you, Lord, for storing my tears. Thank you, Lord, for hearing my prayers. Thank you, Lord, for never turning your back on me. Thank you, Lord, for being there with me in the midnight hour. I just feel like preaching just a minute or two. Thank you, Lord, for all the blessings. Thank you for my children. Thank you for my family. Thank you for my church. And you know what? I believe it'd do a lot of us good if we'd take a time to do that. Amen. Not coming here with our agendas. Not coming here with venom in our soul. But come with joy in our soul and say, God, do your... Amen. I'm here, Lord. Bless me. Help me today. Amen. And let me be a blessing. Let me be a help to somebody. Amen. That's all what you ought to all want. Lord, let me be a help to somebody. Lord, give me something. Give me a song. Give me something to say to somebody. To be an encouragement unto them. The Word of God says we are to be edifiers of the saints. Hey, let us in this day, amen, when the church is being attacked in the left and right, from from east to west, amen, if there's ever a time the people of God need to come together, it's the day that we're living in. If there's ever a day that we stand for what's true and what's right, it's the day we're living in. If there's ever a time that we fall in love with old time worship, it's today. If there's ever a time we get behind old time preaching, it's today. If it's ever a time to get behind our halters and pray like we never have before, it's today. It ain't tomorrow. It's today. Because tomorrow may never come. Because the eastern sky may split. Amen. And we may just get out of here. Amen. I'm going to get ready to play that number six for me, Brother Matthew. I'm going to finish reading this. Amen. Getting rid of that, that CD I put in that is a pink CD. Amen. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be called up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. 
and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Verse number 18, I think we, we read verses 4, 13 through 17 so much. And I know verse 18 is a very short verse. But if there's ever a time that we need to take 18 to heart, it's tonight. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. What I'm supposed to do when you're down and out, Brother Ronnie, the Bible says comfort you with these words. The Lord's coming back. He's coming back. The Lord himself's coming back. And I just felt like I needed to comfort you in that. Ain't that Bible? Ain't that what he's telling us? He says, wherefore, comfort one another. Michael, he's coming back. Amen. Put your head up. He's coming back. Everything's going to be all right. He's coming back. All your trials, all your troubles, they soon going to be over. All your crying, all your pain, all your sorrow, all your suffering. Lift up, lift up your head, weary child. It's almost over. He's coming back. He's coming back just like he said. Let me give you this, and Brother Matthew's going to play a song for you. In Revelation, no, in 1 Thessalonians 5, it says, But of the times and seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. He could come and fetch us away tonight. For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. Amen. I want want Brother Matthew to start playing that song. I want you to hear this. It might be an encouragement to somebody tonight. These words were encouragement to me. I want you to just hear the words. Got in the car, which are the words of the sun.
I like that it won't be long distance. Seems like the fight gets tougher as we go on. Yeah, yeah. Amen. The battles get st- steeper and the battles get harder. Now, if there's ever a time we as a church do the things that would be pleasing unto God, it's the day. Ah, right. oh, Brother Mike, I fall short so many areas in my life. I fall so short, but the Lord never fails. The Lord has never failed me, he never will. He'll never fail you. He'll get us there. We'll get there. One way or other, we're going to get there. There may be some more mountains to climb. There may be some more dark valleys you have to cross. There may be some more times you have to go to the funeral home. More times you need to go to the hospital. Bless God, you're going to make it. You're going to make it. Because over there, it's going to be worth it all. It's going to be worth it all. I thank you so much for paying attention to us tonight. I'll ask you to stand. Amen. I hope you enjoyed yourself tonight. Amen. I hope that when we dig into this starting next Wednesday night, we're going to start talking about these horses. We're talking about these horsemen on the horizon. I want you to pay very close attention. And if you want to, go ahead and study it out a little bit. What does those things mean? What, what, what are these horsemen? What do they stand for? What do they represent? And uh, I tell you what, it will help you in your Bible studies. Amen. All right, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Let's go pray and come praying. Ask somebody to come to the house of God with you Sunday. Come in the prayer room, men, 945, ready to worship the Lord right there, right then and there. Amen. I thank God for all the men that we have had in the prayer room the last few. I mean, we've had it full of the last, and I appreciate that. And I believe that's been an effect in our church too, brother. I really do. I believe it's been a help to our church. So let's go to the Lord in prayer, thanking God for what he's done. Let's go. Amen.